Paralyze. Hey guys, Rob from Georgia here, and I am your Wednesday night reviewer for Body Bags and have the great honor of coming to you the night before Thanksgiving. So, uh, an early shout out to that. Hope all the preparations and everything are going well for you this evening. Uh, tonight's reviews you can already see from uh, behind me and what I'm holding up here. This is the uh, Scorpion release, of course, of Humongous 1982. And uh, I need to say that, uh, man, I love me some island horror. Uh, that is easily my, my favorite subgenre. I love island horror, man. When anytime anyone is going out, uh, they're out in the middle of any, is it nowhere or somewhere, whatever, out in the ocean or whatever, and something happens and they wash up on a beach and man, things just go bad. It's awesome. Uh, I just love it, man. I don't care what it is. Uh, it's great. So, uh, so I had to go. I had to go with um, humongous, man, because for the longest time, the longest time. This film, man, uh, you know, I would look high and low for it, and uh, I would always hope I would go into Goodwill, maybe find a, a VHS copy or uh, uh, Amazon, but it just seemed like, uh, I think it was Katrina's uh, Nightmare Theater edition or whatever, um, was the only copy that would come up. And man, sometimes, man, when the, the price they were asking was just insane, and so I just let it go and let it go. And then, lo and behold, Scorpion comes along, and finally, finally, uh, brings out this. This is easily one of my favorite films from uh, from back when uh, I was a kid, and uh, always loved uh, that poster. Or, I don't know if it's a glare. I hope not. But uh, uh, God, man, I love this. I love this movie. So uh, from 1982, which is also my favorite year for films, um, 1982, humongous. Of course, uh, stars uh, Janet Julian as Sandy. David Wasaki as Eric, Janet Baldwin as Carla, and of course, Gary Robbins as the humongous. Um, it's great. Uh, also, too, I learned, I had no idea, but he is Sawtooth in uh, Wrong Turn. And uh, so that's interesting. He was a professional wrestler uh, who uh, went into acting, and uh, this was his first major uh, gig was humongous. Um, anyways, uh, it is directed by Paul Lynch, um, and as you can see, uh, he's also, two years earlier, did Prom Night, and the writer, um, William Gray, William Gray, uh, was known for, uh, he wrote The Changeling uh, with George C. Scott, and so two very notable pieces of work um, outside, of course, uh, this uh, film, which, uh, uh, you know, even in the early days, I mean, it kind of, it kind of came along, and uh, right as Embassy or Abco Embassy, I mean, it was kind of breaking up again, and and it was just seeing its not so great days. And if you listen to the commentary uh, with both the director and the writer, uh, they they talk at great length about how timing just wasn't on their side with this film, uh, whether it was the poster art, which they both hate, or uh, just the marketing, um, just how. Uh, uh, motorcycle flying by. Um, just uh, how overall the, the film got treated. Um, it kind of missed, just missed, you know, the fog had come out and a lot of films, 80, 81, and it just kind of, it just missed it. It just missed it. But you know, I grew up as a kid, I love this movie. I love the poster art. I, I never dug that deep into um, whether how much it fit the movie or not fit the movie. Uh, the movie itself scared the wits out of me as a kid. I don't know. Maybe it was because most of the movie was in the dark, and uh, so the jump scares were pretty good, at least for you know for me. Um, but uh, also, I just mentioned this is a Canadian release as well. And uh, but uh, basically, basically what we got here is uh, a group of kids um, who are heading out. This is Lake Michigan area. They're basically heading out on a small little. Uh, excursion to St. Martin Island and uh, along the way they happen upon a uh, fisherman who's uh, stranded seemingly in the middle of nowhere um, and they pick up him and he t starts telling them the tale of how he you know kind of broke up just off the shore of Dog Island 
and uh, and so he tells them the tale of Ida Parsons, the family, and um, just uh, sort of the misfortune. And no one goes on this island. And if you happen to uh, go by this island, all you hear is the dogs uh, is populated by dogs, and it, it's just got this it's sort of this mythology already, and people just avoid this island at all costs. And these are the movies I love, man. When it's on an island like this, and it's it's just got a bad reputation, and people stay away from it, and then somehow a group of unlucky kids. Um, but these kids, uh, the three, um, Sandy, Eric, of course, and, and Carla, those three, I'm telling you, there's times in this movie where they're all sort of side by side in frame, and I'm down to, you would think you were watching Scooby-Doo or something, uh, the, the cinematic version of Scooby-Doo. Um, it's, uh, it's uncanny. Uh, it's kind of funny, actually. And that even comes up in the director commentary, and I would have never even thought of it before what it was a, for them mentioning uh, it. So, anyways, uh, you also have this issue between Eric and Nick, their brothers, on the boat. Uh, a lot of stuff going back and forth between characters. And Nick finally decides, he just doesn't, he's pot smoker and whatnot, and he's, uh, he's a little fried out. Uh, in the middle of the night then uh, he decides to take control of the boat and try to get him out of there and of course things go from bad to worse and next thing you know they're washed up on the beachhead and there you go the rest of the film is it, it's not a straight horror film in the sense of uh, what you would think it's more of um, well, it's weird I said Scooby-Doo it's really kind of a an uncovering of sorts of Who's Ida Parsons? Who's this woman who's been living on this island with their dogs um, for the last 30-some years? And I should I should say this, too. The film opens up in 1946 on Labor Day weekend, um, and a vicious, vicious rape uh, unfolds before us. Um, Ida um, is raped by, and this, it's never really fully said, the relationship uh, between the guy and her, um, but he's sort of... Um, pushes her on to, towards the down by the beach and uh, he uh, has his way with her it's very vicious um, and uh, back up at the main house uh, his party's going on of course this is the height of the family it's a lumbering family uh, in the lumbering business and uh, they're, they're sort of at the height of things and uh, but the father senses something's wrong and he lets loose the dogs and when the dogs come down to the beach and they happen upon the scene well let's just say uh, the dogs take matters into their own hands and Ida sort of finish things off but then from there on is the story this uncovering of this mythology which is so kind of neat and this layering effect that happens um, which it's funny if you watch prom night um, there are connections my little one just got up I gotta wrap this up uh, there are some really weird parallels going on between uh, Prom Night uh, and this film uh, in terms of the um, both the antagonist and the protagonist and how the film ends and where the protagonist, the last survivor, um, where they both end up in both films. And it's really kind of interesting. I mean, it's uh, the commentary was kind of hard to listen to because it, you could tell they weren't in the same room, I, I guess, and they sort of things were just kind of brought together. Um, but it's still a lot of stuff kind of comes out. And so uh, there's a lot, there's really a lot to unpack in this film. And so I would say if, you, if you've never seen it, you ought to see it. But if you've seen it and weren't that impressed and sort of just threw off by the wayside, uh, I'd say go back there and uh, revisit Prom Night. And uh, there's a lot, there's a lot of stuff going on um, beneath the surface. Um, and I don't know how much more to say. It's, uh, it's, 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 uh, it's some interesting things and uh, so I guess I'll just instead of rambling this time I'll try to cut it off here and just uh, humongous uh, 1982 my favorite year in film and again I am a, uh, a whore an island whore fanatic if you got any suggestions uh, of island horror films films that I might be interested in please drop them down in the comment section I, I want to start building up my library uh, with island horror films and um, so if you could do that be so kind to do that that would be awesome and um, so again from 1982 it is the film humongous 
And uh, this is VHS 82 Apostrophe signing off this Wednesday night. Again, I'm your reviewer for Body Bags. And uh, thank you for, uh, for watching, for listening. And uh, I want to say again, happy Thanksgiving to everyone. And as always, as always, go Bills.